right guys, it is finally time. We're gonna start the peppers today. Now normally I start my tomatoes and peppers at the same time, but this year I'm gonna try to wait a little bit longer on my tomatoes. I may still be a little bit early for peppers in my zone. I think I have about 12 weeks before my frost. Um, but this year I've got the greenhouse that I can transfer things into. So I'm thinking that it'll be okay Normally I start way too early and then I end up sticking them outside way too early and then they kind of get stunted by them. And this year I'm going to try not to put them out into the cold too early. Um, so they usually end up doing okay, but it takes them a long time to get going. So if you just wait, try to be patient, things will move along a little quicker. So one of the things I want to do is I want to tell you uh, what I've done in the past and what I'm gonna do differently this year. What I've used in the past is what you get from like Walmart or Lowe's. They come in like this uh, tray and then it has these little, little worse cells. And uh, these did fine, but you have to up pot them a lot sooner because I usually start a few seeds in each cell you know, just in case the germination is in front of these two. You can get these at the Dollar Tree. So they have like, and both of these come with like some, like a clear dome that goes over the top. I don't ever use those. I just get rid of those. So what I am trying new this year are these. So I got two different kinds. I got an order from Bootstrap Farmer. So they're supposed to be more sturdy, and they are. Water. So how it comes is you get these two and a half inch pots. So they're deeper than these, as you can see, and a lot bigger. So I'll be able to leave the plants in these um, for a longer period of time. And I'm also going to up pot these into these containers as well, except I don't have very many of these that I got from um, bootstrap former farmer because they were a little bit more expensive. So I went with, um, and got and ordered some more from Growers Solution. So pretty much the same size as you can see, but they're a little more flimsier, so they might not last as long. I don't know if you can see, but I'm squeezing these and they don't really budge. So they're they're sturdy. So as far as quality, Bootstrap Farmer's w the winner. Another reason why I'm switching to this type of setup is because I just use these from Grower Solution. So you see how you have these inserts and these inserts have holes. So when it's time to not bottom water anymore, what I used to have to do, once these were up potted, I usually potted them up in like those red Solo cups. I would have to, so once they were up potted, you know, you put them in here to transfer them from, you know, inside to outside. But it was like very flimsy and things would fall down. And then when like it would rain outside and the bottom here, this one doesn't have holes. You didn't want your plants to get waterlogged, so you have to go outside and you have to take them all out of this tray. It just got to be a hassle, and I don't want to deal with it anymore. And this just seems like a little bit more of a, a better thing. Once I've got them up potted in here, and I need to bottom water, you just put that in there, and you just take one of these out, pour it in that and then replace that one and you've bottom watered. But when you're ready to take them outside and they don't need to be bottom watered anymore, just drop that off and still handy to carry. And this holds, I didn't say how much it holds, it hold, it's got a row of four and then a row of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four and eight. So this holds 32, so you know, 32 as opposed to how many solo cups, like 12 be able to haul a little bit more cat sorry i make my own 
seed starting mix. That's what this is right here. It's just, um, I get the big bags of peat moss at Lowe's. And then I, add, I get a big bag of, um, it's either vermiculite or perlite. I think it's vermiculite. But I got a big old bag of that. And then I just mix, I believe the ratio is, it's about three to one. So three parts peat moss to one part vermiculite about what it looks like and I usually don't mix anything in with this for just starting the seeds I will when I go to up pot them add a little bit of uh, worm castings just to feed the plants a little bit more I also make um, a very diluted solution of fish emulsion and I'll you know use that to water each time I water like once a week I'll go to bottom water. I use very, very diluted solution of the fish emulsion and I'll feed the plants with that as well. I also sterilize my mix. For my seed starting mix, I always, or when I up pot, anytime I'm having the plants sit inside my house, I sterilize and then I'll add, if I need to add um, food to the dirt, worm castings or a fertilizer, I add that after it it's been sterilized. And to sterilize it, I use boiling water. So I usually use just one of those big, what is it, 32 quart tubs. Up the um, peat moss and the vermiculite, and then I will boil a big pot of water. Sometimes it takes a couple of pots of water and I will dump it in there, stir it up, put the lid on it, let that hot steam really kill everything. And then it's you know ready to be used. This is something I'm going to try as well this year. So this is, it's called Mycobliss. I got this on Amazon and it's a uh, inoculate. And what it says it does, it promotes vigorous plant and root growth, decreased amount of watering and fertilization, enables the soil to retain nutrients for longer and increase nutrient use efficiency, healthier and denser root systems, improved ability to get nutrients and water uptake from soil and reduces transplant shock. I'm not going to use it to start the seeds, but when I go to up pot my peppers and tomatoes, they say that you just can either sprinkle it a little bit on the roots of the transplant, or you can, you know, when you make your depression in the dirt, you can just sprinkle a little bit into the little hole that you're going to put your transplant in. And it, you know, says it does all these things to make stronger plants and who doesn't want that? So I'm going to try that this year as well. I am starting 20, I am starting 25 different types of pepper plants. Yes, that's excessive. I love to have a variety of things in my garden, even if it's only one pepper plant of each of these varieties, which is probably even more than I can uh, afford in garden space. So fingers crossed I actually have success this year and any extras I um I'm planning to actually have like a little plant sale to uh, make a little bit of the money that I'm spending on my garden back because I'm hoping to build another one of my really long garden beds and the wood is not cheap. So any little bit helps and so some of these extra pepper plants Hopefully people are as interested in some of these varieties as I am. I'm gonna start the banana sweet pepper. Oscompolio pepper. I don't know if I said that right, sorry. Ancho giganta. Pepperoncino. A lot of these are new to me this year. This is a sweet pepper. It says it's a compact plant. Delicious raw or cooked serve them in casseroles stuffed and baked and then I tried growing these last year and had like I said no success so I'm gonna try again this year and I'm excited about it the what is this in the nata pino and the habanada I mean I don't care for hot peppers and those are supposed to have the flavor of a jalapeno and an, a habanada but without the heat so Haban did I say habanada? Habanero, have the flavor of a habanero. These last year were great. I mean, I did a poor job of taking care of my garden last year and 
these still survived in the abuse and produced so many like big peppers. They were huge, long peppers. And so I'm gonna grow those again. Corbachi sweet. I didn't, I grew these a couple years ago and they are, they're, they're delicious. This one's new to me, Tangerine Dream. Another sweet pepper. This is something I just got from, I think it was Lowe's. Maybe it was Tractor Supply. Another one, Rewa. Sweet pepper, Orange Blaze. Sweet pepper, Sunbright. A sweet ivory yellow bell pepper. And it is called Val Valley Hot. Okay, I don't, can't pronounce that. This one I'm not gonna pronounce either. And it's a Corno de Toro type sweet pepper. Big red sweet pepper. And then I just got this from like the Dollar Tree. It's just a Grand Bell pepper mix. Got a bag of peppers from Aldi and the peppers were so sweet and so delicious. I have no idea if I'm actually going to get the same type of pepper from these seeds, but I wrote on there, super sweet Aldi peppers, long type. So they were like long and I believe they were like different colors, yellow and uh, red and orange. So I needed to try out is this one. Everybody talks about it, says it's delicious. It's the Jimmy Nardello and says it's a highly prized grilling pepper used in Italian cooking produces deep red, medium mild peppers. They're excellent fresh or dried. So maybe I'll try drying them too. Lemon drop pepper. And it says it's got a lemony flavor and aroma. Fruits grow up to two inches long and dry well. It says it's heat tolerant. Aren't most peppers. And then this is another one I'm excited to try this year. It is the Shishito pepper. And everybody has been raving about this one on YouTube, so. It says the fruits are sweet and slightly hot. Grill these. Apparently if you roast these or grill these, they're delicious. Okay, and so as far as the hot ones go, which I don't have a lot, I've got the green jalapeno, lemon spice jalapeno, the yellow, the Tabasco pepper. I hear that the plant itself is actually very beautiful. beautiful. And I am gonna grow habanero, some pepper seeds that I saved from red jalapeno. And then this one I'm excited to try. I tried growing it last year and it was a flop. So I'm gonna try again. And that is the Sugar Rush Peach. So that's all 25, all 25. And I think I might also start my ground cherries. Now, I have not had success with ground cherries in the three years I've been gardening. I do not know what I'm doing wrong. Can somebody please give me some pointers? Cause I've tried every which way. I mean, how can you get it wrong? I mean, and I've tried more than once in a gardening season. Like I've tried like three, I, I don't know. And it's not the seeds. Like I've got seeds from different packets, different con, I don't know, I'm just, and I want ground cherries. I want ground cherries. Why can't I grow a ground cherry? So I'm gonna start Aunt Molly's ground cherry. And I've got it from two different packets. And then this one's new and that is Lowen Family Heirloom ground cherry. So try as I might. If you fail, try, try again. So I've been a failure at it and I'm gonna try, try again. But if you have any pointers, please leave them in the comments. Like, it, is it this hard to get ground cherries going? Like sometimes they germinate and they'll just be the, the, these little puny things and I go to put them in the ground and nothing. I So frustrating. So my soil here is pre-moistened. I actually 
just bottom watered them. So I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna make out all the labels for each one. I have this fancy tool that I like to use and it's this old paintbrush, but it's got this end to it that is just perfect for poking the seeds or making little indentations to drop the seeds into. Is I'm going to do four, maybe one in each corner. And then press them down just a little bit. Cover them with dirt. I like to make a nice smooth surface at the top. And we'll just keep doing that with every variety that I have, all 25. All right, so this is my setup. It's just these two plastic black shelving units I got from Lowe's. Back when I got them, they were like $35, but now when I look them up, they're like 65, so. Inflation, yay. Slide those, oh, there. All right, so they were directly on the heat mat there. And I think I'm going to lower the lights a little bit on this side. So what I did to be able to raise and lower the lights is I drilled holes in different spots along here for me to hang the lights. And then when it comes time to lower them, take them off, put them at the desired height. I want it as close to it as I can. And once I got it there, So I've lowered it down so that there's real intense light. It's not as low on this side because I've still got my um, onions over here, but if I need to, I'll just, you know, turn it around so that this side gets brighter light. I don't know that it's going to be necessary. And uh, so, there you go guys, come along with me and I will uh, keep you updated on how everything is doing. Thanks for coming along with me today on starting my peppers for the 2022 year. Stay tuned and we'll see how all of these pepper varieties do. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you in the next one.